Arsenal mining and its formalization in focus today on Weekend File. Have a good evening and welcome to the program. Arsenal mining has been practiced in Nigeria for many decades as a pro poor livelihood strategy that involves people using simple tools and equipment for mining. It is estimated that about 170 artisanal mining sites exist in the country with over 500,000 people directly involved and another 300,000 as service providers. Some of the products mined include precious metals, gold and variety of gemstones like sapphire, emerald, tourmaline, topaz and others. As a result of non-formal involvement by government and uh, environmentalists, artisanal mining activities bring about environmental damage, loss of life through lead poisoning, social disruptions and in some cases conflicts. The sales channels, which are largely unofficial and embedded with smuggling by distribution cartels, lead to loss of revenue and royalties. In recognition of the importance of artisanal and small-scale mining as livelihood strategy for poverty alleviation, the federal government is adopting an action plan termed formalization through corporatization to address artisanal mining issues such as lack of transparent legal framework, weak institutional structures and capacity to implement existing regulations. We will probe all the issues beneath the surface for better appreciation of what government intends to do and whether or not the impact of the plan can change the narrative in the mining sector. My guest today is Patrick Ojeka, Director of Artisanal Mining, Federal Ministry of Mines and Steel Development. My name is Kurian Umayo. Now, let's get to work. We we'll begin with the news. Though no suspected case of coronavirus has been recorded in Taraba State, the state government is taking nothing for granted to prevent the disease getting to the state. Joseph Olsen reports that equipment have been procured for a special response team and the, at the Jalingo Airport for defection and care of suspected cases. Since the outbreak of coronavirus in China, the federal and state government have been up and doing to ensure it is not widely spread in Nigeria. Taraba State is not left out as the state government has acquired equipment for screening, testing and protective gears for health workers as well as sterilizing items to checkmate outbreak. A quarantine center at the Taraba State Specialist Hospital is put in place for any suspected coronavirus case in the state. We have the PPE, that is the personal protective uh, equipment. The Jalingo Airport has been operating commercial flight on a daily basis between Abuja and Jalingo. If we have a suspected case using this very infrared thermometer, that means the temperature will be higher than above normal, then we make sure that we alert the specialist hospital or the medical center, which are the tertiary institution here in the state. Several public awareness campaigns have been on, sensitizing the people on the disease and personal hygiene to prevent infection. In Jalingo, Joseph Sound Oten, NTA News. Thank you, Joseph. And right now, we'd like to uh, take you over to our Benin Network Center, where we have the Honorable Minister of Health, uh, Dr. Uh, Henry. Dr. Henry, good evening and welcome to Weekend File. Good evening and welcome to Weekend File. All right, uh, as at the last count, the coronavirus disease uh, is in almost uh, 90 countries. And of course, Nigeria has been able to maintain its single case status two weeks after the confirmation. What is being done to sustain this feat? Well, we are continuing very strongly with our strategy of uh, first-line defense at the airport and uh, screening all passengers very carefully. Uh, as you know, we take uh, the thermal, uh, we use a the thermal camera to take their temperature and they also fill a self-reporting form and uh, this is analyzed for any uh, suspicious uh, uh, patient and uh, they, if, if there's any that's suspicious, they are taken aside for secondary screening. Uh, up till now, we have screened over 23, about 23 or 24 uh, cases, and uh, only one, the one that's in Lagos, has been positive. 
All right. Uh, but uh, if anything happens, uh, we are ready to. Uh, we are ready to handle uh, another case if it comes up. But we are hoping it does not come up. All right, thank you. Now, what is the pace of the recovery of the index case? How close are we uh, from going out to the announcement that our case, uh, index case has been giving a clean bill of health? Well, it hasn't been given a clean bill of health. We, he is improving. Uh, we are monitoring him. His symptoms are getting less. The day uh, after he came in, he developed uh, slightly worse pains, uh, symptoms. He had cough and uh, other symptoms of, uh, that are typical of the COVID-19 infection. But since then, he's continued to improve uh, the uh, viral load because we measure his viral load is reducing and uh, his general condition is good. Uh, on the whole, you would say that his case is a rather mild type. It uh, didn't involve any uh, respiratory distress. So we are still watching him, and when the viral load is zero, then we're ready to go home. Now, Nigerians would want a clarification on the sum of 1.67 billion naira year marked for COVID-19. Uh, what sort of support have you received or expecting from both development partners and the private sector? Well, the, what we have available, what we have on hand, is what the federal government has uh, provided, which in total is about uh, one billion. We have had uh, uh, promises from partners. Uh, there is a uh, foundation that has promised 200 million, and uh, the uh, Global Fund has also, the country coordinating mechanism of the Global Fund has also expressed interest to support the uh, effort uh, if we make the application for it. But we have not uh, received anything uh, from any other partners. It is uh, the close, close to one billion from government that we are operating with at the moment. All right, uh, uh, Dr. Henry, we'd like to thank you for your time and of course uh, uh, your thoughts this uh, evening. Thank you again for coming on Weekend File. Thank you for inviting me. It's a pleasure to share my thoughts. To other news now, soccer has come the way of some orphans in Kaduna as the First Lady Aisha Buhari, through her pet project, Future Assured, distributes food items to orphanages in the state. Muhammad Omar Ajenge reports that the First Lady was represented on the occasion. These are orphans at Ali Hisan Children's Home, Kaduna. There are more than 130 receiving care from donations they get from individuals and non-governmental organizations. The most recent is coming from the First Lady, Hajia Aisha Muhammad Buhari, whose just hour was delivered by Hajia Umi Garba Rufai. Dr. Aisha Muhammad Buhari uh, sent um, items from the Future Assured um, project that she has. She sent uh, bags of rice and some cooking oil and some blankets that she wanted um, to be distributed in Kaduna State. And uh, she's doing this in other states as well. The donation was extended to Fed Hope Offnade Ministry at Saban Tisha, Agape Offnade at Kakao and Umu Ayman Foundation at Ungwandosa in Kaduna. 15-year-old orphan Beatrice Habila is one of the beneficiaries. They should know that God is with them and can help them. Founders of the homes commended the president's wife for putting smile on the faces of the orphans. In Kaduna, I am Muhammad Umarajingi, NTA News. About 19,000 internally displaced persons in Brown State benefit from relief materials distribution by the state government. Governor Babagana Zulum monitored the distribution at uh, Gajeram Town. Mohamed Goni reports. Each of the 11,300 women receive a fabric and 5,000 Naira cash support, while 7,800 heads of households were presented with a bulk of rice, maize grid, and cooking oil each. Professor Obagana Omarazilum expressed concern over continued provision of food items to communities and stressed commitment to resuscitate agriculture in the agrarian communities in the state, creating an enabling environment for local economies to thrive through support for entrepreneurs and small-scale businesses, as well as entrenchment of civil authorities in all areas. The local government secretariat and others should be permanently here in Gajiram, while all those local governments in northern Borno, why they don't have human population, Marte, Kukawa, Gudumbali, have to operate in Mungono local government. A 
comes from next week. And we shall verify them. Any staff who is not willing to be there shall be summary legislation. Member representing Monguno Marche Manganze Federal Constituency, Mohamed Tahir Monguno, lauded efforts of the present administration in the state at providing humanitarian support to communities as well as reconstruction and resettlement drive, assuring that the National Assembly will continue to work to ensure return of peace to the Northeast. Mahmoud Goni, NTA News. G Rule Africa, a non governmental organization, is fronting an initiative where Nigerians will focus more on national integration and not divide it along ethnic or religious lines. Timothy Suf covered the conference for NTNEs. The executive director of the Niger State Primary Health Care Development Agency, Dr. Ibrahim Dangana, is among many that believe that Nigeria as a nation has faced severe tests and trials in her drive towards nationhood. He joins other like minds here in Abuja to examine some of the core challenges bedeviling the country with a view to coming up with a resolve to establishing a sense of common belonging among the diverse ethnic groups within the nation. We will say we've come a long way post-independence, but we are not where we want to be as a country. We are still battling with basic necessities of a country. Nigeria, like every other country, has their, we have our own challenges. So I don't call it a problem because I know there are things you can work on and get a result. Convener of the conference, Dr. Henry Debem, identified greed and selfishness as major factors militating against achieving a united and peaceful society for all. There's nobody that can stay alone or survive in isolation. So we have this mandate that this generation might be the last generation that will have the last chance to remodel this country. The underlining message here is the clarion call on Nigerians to remain their brother's keeper and stay together now like never before. In Abuja, Timothy Yusuf, NT News. Aspire Women Forum, a non-profit organization, has joined the rest of the world in campaigning for a gender equal world where bias against women and girls cease to exist. This campaign is in line with the 2020 International Women's Day, which seeks the realization of women's rights. Emmanuel Animiro has this report. The aim of the 2020 International Women's Day is to bring together all generations of women and girls leaders and gender equality activists to collectively tackle the unfinished business of empowering all women and girls in the year to come. Aligning with the global initiative, Aspire Women Forum is seeking support for women's health education, inclusiveness in workplace, and total happiness. That women today need to look within themselves Whatever they're doing in life, is it their purpose? Is it what they enjoy? Because once your purpose meets your passion, you are definitely on the road to happiness. Finding happiness, the focus of the forum, gave room for women to aspire for happiness through various inscriptions picked at random to teach women how to seek their goals. So I think this program really uh, make it in such a way that we realize ourselves, we realize our potential and where we are moving to. If we can go back to our values, our core values, we can achieve happiness. Every 8th of March is celebrated as International Women's Day. Emmanuel Ayemiru, NTA News. The British Council in Nigeria is 75 years and is looking forward to expanding its areas of intervention on capacity building and sustainability in the delivery of its development programs. To further deepen this bilateral relationship, a new office complex was inaugurated to ensure a conducive and effective working environment. Monsoudi Mandati takes us through the report. It's a bright and sunny day. All roads lead to the transcript in Abuja. The stage is set and the ambience is just perfect for the event. Here, acquaintances are renewed and new friendships are established. Then the business of the day commences. The ship is sinking fast so able bodies to the oars. If we don't bring the change, it'll stay the way it is. It's the 75th anniversary of the British Council in Nigeria. Through our work in the arts and creative industries, uh, working in education right through from grassroots basic education through to higher... 
values. So we build up the projects in a mutually beneficial way and then we implement them also together. A panel discussion on how it all began for the British Council and the weight of impacts the council has made on some Nigerians who have now risen to stardom. Giving opportunities to Nigerians, especially in the area of education and entrepreneurship. And 75 years is a long time. You can imagine the impact. The useful and very impactful you know, partnerships across all the issues that shape and continue to shape higher education. And here comes the icing on the cake. Behold a new office complex to house the British Council with hopes for a more fruitful relationship with Nigeria. With this, it is hoped that both countries will extend their relations to the next level. Momso Damien Dati, NT News. Best wishes from the All Progressives Congress APC to the Vice President Professor Yemi Oshimbajo as he clocks 63 on Sunday, March 8, 2020. The party, in a statement by its National Publicity Secretary Lanre Isa Onili, salutes the patriotism, doggedness, and untiring efforts of the Vice President in partnering and assisting President Muhammadu Buhari in tackling security, fighting corruption, and resetting the nation's economy on the path of growth and development. The APC particularly uh, noted uh, that the Vice President's massive contributions in the success of the APC-led administration's social investment program, which is reputed to be Africa's biggest and most ambitious social welfare policy for the most vulnerable in the society. The party expresses confidence that the commendable partnership of the President and the Vice President will take Nigeria to the next level of peace, progress and prosperity. You're watching Weekend File on the network service of the NTA. Uh, liberating Africa from the shackles of uh, foreign dominance, uh, the plan or the pan African spirit must be rekindled. This is the tackling point or talking point uh, of a colloquium organized in honor of the 83rd birthday celebration of former Nigeria's President Chief Ulishegu Basanjo. Uh, Denny Taiwo reports. Dwelling on the theme, Pan-Africanism and a liberal democracy under siege, the speakers believe it is high time Africa redefined liberal democracy to reflect its rich traditional values while shunning such countercultures as homosexuality and other negative tendencies. Ogun State Governor Prince Dakpabiodun and some other guests traced the thematic focus of the colloquium to the life of the celebrant who they described as a global citizen. Baba is so patriotic and Baba does not see Nigeria in tribes, regions or ethnic groups. He's one man that is so passionate about the unity of this country. Thanking God for his grace, a highly elated chief Obasanjo said Nigeria would only attain its full potential when integrity and patriotism rule the heart of Nigerians. Whatever I have achieved, there are many people who have actually walked with me who achieved it. In the light of the challenges of artisanal mining and the need to shift attention to the potentially large role of minerals extraction in economic development, the federal government plans to formalize unregulated mining activities. You will learn more about that when we get to the second part of the show tonight. Correspondence report after the break. The Universal Health and Economic Empowerment Foundation in partnership with Noble Gate Projects Limited presents the major national agricultural and industrial trade fair with the theme Economic Recovery and Growth of the Agricultural and Industrial Sector in Nigeria. Special guest of honor, His Excellency, the President and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces, Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Muhammad Buhari, GCFR. Chief Host, the Minister of the Federal Capital Territory, FCT Abuja, Malam Mohammed Bello, Chairman of the Occasion, Senator Abdullahi Adamu, Guest of Honor, the 36 State Governors, Ministers, Heads of Agricultural Research Institutes, and all local government chairmen. Venue, Old Parade Ground, Area 10 Abuja, date, Saturday 7th March. 
to Sunday 16th March 2020. Time 9 a.m. daily. For sponsorship details, call 0701-234-5727 or 0705-345-3144 or visit our website www.uheef.org. The Maiden National Agricultural and Industrial Trade Fair Abuja 2020. Come and be part of development. It is morning, a new beginning. As you prepare everyone for the day ahead, just anything is not enough. Only you make breakfast special, creamy, tasty, with vitamins and nutrients we need for a delightful, healthy start. So start your day right with Hollandia Evap. Hollandia. This March, the heartbeat of Nigeria, Edo State, welcomes all 36 states and the FCT to the 20th National Sports Festival, Edo 2020. Get ready for the greatest sporting event ever hosted in Nigeria from the 22nd of March to the 1st of April. As the best athletes from across the nation showcase their sporting talent in 39 exciting sports. And in the spirit of the games, His Excellency, President Muhammad Buhari will light the festival torch at the opening ceremony that will take place at the newly refurbished Samuel Obomadia Stadium, Bindi City. The chief host of the festival is His Excellency, Mr. Godwin Obaseki, the governor of Edo State. Edo is ready. It's game time. Edo 2020. Coronavirus, also known as COVID-19, what you should do and what you should know. What are the symptoms? Runny nose, sore throat, headache, fever, cough, feeling of being unwell. Human coronaviruses or COVID-19 is most commonly spread from an infected person to others through the air by coughing and sneezing, Close personal contacts such as touching or shaking hands, touching an object or surface with the virus on it, then touching your mouth, nose, eyes without washing your hands. A COVID-19 infected person is most infectious when he or she is displaying symptoms. The most effective way to protect yourself from the virus is to practice good personal hygiene. Wash hands with soap under running water or use an alcohol-based sanitizer if water is not available. Avoid touching your face with your hands. We must also protect others. If we are sick, we should rest and recover at home as much as possible. If we need to go out and see a doctor while sick, we should wear a surgical mask to protect others from being infected. This message is from the National Orientation Agency. Yeah, we thank you for staying with us on Weekend File. And uh, first of all, let's uh, introduce our guest tonight, who is already here in the studio, Mr. Patrick Kleber Ojeka. Uh, Mr. Ojeka is the Director of Artisanal and the Small Scale Mining Department. Ministry of Mines and Steel Development. It's a pleasure to have you this evening. Thank you. All right. Uh, before we engage you, let's first of all bring in two reports on mining. From Kogi, Charles Alpha reports that the state, as the bedrock of mineral deposits, is better positioned to actualize President Buhari's policy objective to rejuvenate the mining sector and expand the country's revenue base. Okaba in Angpa and Dekina local government areas have one of Kogi's largest deposits of coal explored crudely, the enormous limestone deposit in Obajana and the Itakbe iron ore. This is a sign of the availability of dolomites, gemstone, vespa, gold and more. From one local government to another, the presence of large and small government corporations operated for decades, utilizing the abundant mineral reserves across the state. With the artisanal mining sector grossly overrun by unskilled and untrained labor, 
maximizing a positive impact as preconceived by President Muhammad Buhari means bringing on board the artisanal miners for a collaborative and transparent knowledge and data sharing that would boost the nation's income. The government is not going to come in as an operating organization or operating company. They will create an enabling environment, make it easy for um, <clears throat> those who are working to work, companies to assess their sites. The realization of President Muhammad Bari's formalization plans will no doubt translate potentials of the Kogi mining sector into a major catalyst for economic development and as well promote better integrated rural development strategies. From Enugu, China Yangoye report said that Nigeria stands to gain uh, when it uh, of course, engages in mining uh, coal uh, that's, of course, uh, uh, huge in that part of the country. This coal mine is one of the sites in Enugu which held the keys to the economic window of Nigeria as it produced coal, which was a major source of energy, to Oji River Power Station, generating electricity to the entire southeast. Also, as a result of increased mining activities in the state, a railway system was constructed linking Enugu coal mine fields with seed ports in Port Harcourt for the evacuation of coal. Coal was used to power the whole industry in Nigeria. It was coal that powered all the whole uh, rails, all the trains that were conveying both the palm produce, both the, uh, the pyramids, uh, the granite pyramids in Kano, and the cocoa. It was coal that was used to transport all these things to the port. The special interest in Enugu coal was not just about its quantity but quality as it was used in steel production, driving engines, cement manufacturing and electricity generation. 40 kilometers radius, 700 height. That is what helped what Nigeria dug underneath the Ngo, Ngo field to to develop Nigeria. It is, however, the views of many that with the new thinking of government in the areas of reviving the coal mines in Enugu and revitalizing the industries, there will be increased electricity generation, expanded industrialization of the economy, as well as increased employment generation. In Enugu, Chineyengu, NTN News. The Yondu state government is working to ensure the huge bitumen deposits are properly explored. Doris Lumuko tells us more about her findings on bitumen deposit in Yondu state. Yondu state has a large deposit of bitumen, which many experts believe is the largest in Africa. But the sector has remained dormant over the years as all efforts by successive administrations to explore the mineral resource has not been successful. In our own kind of deposit, you got tar sand mixed with a pure bitumen, and you have to be able to have equipment and the technology to separate bitumen from tar sand as you are going along. You wouldn't know when you will meet some of them. So your equipment must be able to handle both. The truth, according to experts, is that bitumen exploration is not a terrain for small-scale miners. It's very almost impossible to artisanally mine bitumen because it's, it's a subsurface um, kind of stuff, even though you have outpours, the complexity and what it requires is you, it's not like a stone that you are chipping away and putting in your pocket and go and sell. Artisanal mining is said to be very active on some other mineral deposits like limestone, bog clay and granite. They are in the informal sector, uh, they are not captured under the TAS nets. And so because they are not captured under the task net, a lot of um, revenue is being lost. Plans are in top gear for the commencement of bitumen exploration in Ondo states. In Akure, Doris Ulumoko, NTN News. Yeah, thank you indeed, Doris. And uh, we're still here with uh, Patrick uh, Ojeka, Director of Artisanal Mining uh, of the Federal Ministry of Mines and Steel Development. I know we are talking about uh, formalization sure. of artisanal mining yeah. in the country. Tell us what that is all about. Uh, formalization, as it is uh, captured, uh, is a process that requires uh, the re incentivizing of the artisanal miners who uh, get into the trade on individual basis. The need for them to bunch together to improve in their yield. And of course, the aim of government in uh, undertaking formalization 
I, so to enable government mainstream these categories of operators to the mainstream operation. Uh, you need to get to create awareness and sensitize them adequately, sufficiently to enable them bunch and thereafter they are registered and through that formalization process which culminates in the registration with the ministry enables them to assess government programs that grow them from the level of poverty to a better place than Nigerians. Yeah, are they willing to key into government policy in this respect? Because of course we know that the biometric capture exercise of artisanal miners is ongoing at the moment. Yes, uh, they are willing. Uh, substantially, a majority of them are showing an interest in uh, bunching together to form cooperative because of the incentives government is providing and placing it uh, on the platform. The biometrics, which is a uh, form part of uh, what we call presidential artisanal smoke gold mining initiative, um, called PAGME, has kick started in KB state and it has to be spread to Oshun state and other states that produces gold. PAGME focuses mainly on gold producing states and that program will cover all the about nine states that produces gold in Nigeria. And then that process will go a long way in sanitizing the subsector, the artisanal field. Now, we understand that uh, we have uh, about 500,000 artisanal you know, miners in Nigeria and another 300,000 who are involved in, uh, uh, in the sales channels if, or, or service providers, as the case may be. Yeah. And you're also talking about uh, corporatization. How is, is this going to work? Let us know the, the steps, you know, uh, the process we take. Yeah, um, it has been very difficult to be able to get to an individual who is motivated by poverty to get into mining activity indiscriminately. Wherever they find themselves, they give no recognition to the lay down rules. Fine. So getting our revenue from there is difficult. Hence, the idea of forming the mutual cooperative to mainstream them. And then through that channel, and then through proper uh, disposal of their wings at the buying center, we enable government to be able to uh, attract much revenue. Yes, I'm asking this question because uh, a situation where a beautiful plan is put in place, you know, yep. but when it comes to implementation, it becomes uh, difficult. It's, it's what we're trying to arrive at. Now, considering the number of people who are involved in artisanal mining, and of course what the government has put in place now to see how they can be formalized, the question still remains, um, how are you going to achieve this? Because uh, artisanal miners are in so many states across the country. Yeah, they are all over the country because of uh, the huge resources that the nature is endowed with. Uh, currently, as we speak, we have about 1,740 cooperatives registered across the country. Uh, the density of the registration differs from state to state and depends on the type of minerals that are available. And they go for high-priced, uh, precious uh, metal like gold. Hence, the North Central Zamfara have a large proportion of uh, the registered cooperative already, and more are bunching to join. All right, now we hear that 30 billion naira was released by the federal government as an uh, intervention fund, another 5 billion uh, from the Bank of Industry and, of course, your ministry. Are uh, the artisanal miners in in incorporated to be able to benefit from, from these funds? Well, let's get the first straight. Uh, for, for before we go further, exactly the 30 billion, yes, was what was uh, uh, granted to the ministry to enable it optimize and uplift the pro uh, the activities to bring every uh, player to the platform. Out of that five, I mean 30 billion, the ministry domiciled 2.5 billion with BOI, with the BOI opting to, you know, pay the counterfeit uh, counterfeit of. 2.5 billion, making it 5 billion. Artisanal cooperatives are entitled to assess that loan, it's a revolving loan. Mm -hmm. Hence, it is put with BOI to assess up to the limit of 10 million naira, not cash given to them directly, but plow through machinery that will improve in their year. Okay, now what about your uh, monitoring mechanism, you know, to ensure that uh, as, uh, as soon as uh, the firm uh, cooperatives and they'll be closely monitored to determine uh, the extent that they're going in terms of uh, mining itself and of course the sales of uh, their the products. Yeah, monitoring mechanism is being improved with uh, 
an activity that is being uh, established in the ministry now that we call the remote sensing. And with that, with the remote sensing, it will reduce, considering the risk factor currently, insecurity and the landscape of the country, uh, the, money, the uh, 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 remote sensing center station that will be established in the ministry will be able to enable the ministry you know, interface and see the activities going on in the field. And by that process, get the coordinate of the location of the same satellite imagery transmitted to the officers on ground with specific instruction to identify that location and give full detail report back to the uh, to headquarters so that appropriate action can be taken. If the program is ongoing and we hopefully um, within a new couple of months that exercise will be completed and the ministry will be able to have efficient and effective uh, monitoring. All right, all right, thank you. Well, we'll, we'll take more reports. Uh, we'll return to you uh, for us to do the concluding part of this uh, conversation. Yeah, thank you. Now, biometric data capture of artisanal gold miners in Cape State is receiving a boost with commitment from the stakeholders to key into the exercise for mutual benefit. Nora Tanko Wakili reports that the exercise is going on hitch free in all the registration centers. Artisanal gold mining is taking place in about seven local government areas of Kebi State where artisans labor to the soil in pockets of the self-acclaimed gold dealers. This development has denied both the artisans and various levels of government their fair share from the natural resource despite efforts being put in place. To contend this ugly trend, the federal government came up with the Presidential Artisanal Gold Mining Initiative aimed at providing legal economic and institutional framework for the activity through a national gold purchase program and provision of better equipment with centralized processing center. The initiative was inaugurated in Kebi State with the view to enrolling all artisanal gold miners where seven registration centers were to be set up. 80% of mining in Nigeria is ASM, it's artisanal mining. We have to know them and sometimes it poses a security risk to do that. This program will bring benefits Adequate arrangements have been put in place at the registration centers with BBN and national identity registration points to address peculiarities of enrollees. This, the artisanal miners and other stakeholders believe, will address most of the challenges bedeviling the sector. And I urge all those who are going to be registered, the artisanal miners, to know that what they do will represent what will be known for. So we want to be them to be good ambassadors. In Brendan Kebi, Nura Tanko Akili, NTA News. Mining sector stakeholders in Niger State, through collaboration with Doctors Without Borders, have put in place modalities for safe mining practices to forestall reoccurrence of lead poisoning experienced six years ago in some communities of a Rafi local government area of the state. Dauda Mohammed, however, reports that recent rise in insecurity in the area has hampered monitoring of mining practices. Six years ago, an outbreak of lead poison in Shakira and Tungamalan communities of Rafi local government area of Niger State left 43 people dead, mostly children under the age of five, with an almost equal number hospitalized. The incident drew the attention of MSF, Doctors Without Borders, and a treatment clinic was set up at the General Hospital Kagara. After the successful treatment of the victims and complete stoppage of all unsafe mining practices and processing within residential areas, contract for the remediation of the affected communities was awarded by the federal government, which involved the evacuation of contaminated soil and its replacement. Treatment is not the solution. Remediation is not the solution. The solution at the end of the day is safer mining programs. After the exercise, Doctors Without Borders, MSF, Occupational Knowledge International, OKI, in collaboration with the government undertook the training of artisanal miners on safe mining practices and new processing techniques of the ore, like wet bore method. You know these miners, some people are immigrants. They travel from somewhere to that place. So whenever those ones on ground see these strangers, doing things that are not uh, correct or doing wrong things, they normally call on the ministry that uh, something is going on. Medical facilities have also been put in place 
to monitor lead levels and testing of miners as well as treatment clinics. We are working together as a joint committee, Ministry of Health, Ministry for Local Government, Ministry of Mineral Resources, and even the Rafi Local Government. For sustainability, a National Safer Mining Lead Poison Training Institute is under construction in Kagara, headquarters of Rafi Local Government area of Niger State in Mina. Dauda Mohammed, NTA News. Now it's time for another break. The conversation continues when we get back. Your information, they important, just like your identity. Now the only way we fit take hala you make you go browse easy.gotvafrica.com. Sign in with your IUC number and mobile number and scroll down to personal details and address. Then check well to see say everything bam. You feel change the one we not correct. To finish everything, just click the save button and it don't finish. Thank you. I make sure see my phone number they correct. That's not why GoTV fit call me, make I come collect my own and wolf. Angel! <laughs> I'm time for my phone in that way because now my correct phone number day for boo. <laughs> Go GoTV. Live it. Love it. Now look me again, no. Make you go do your own. goodness of milk. Just add hot water to get an instant chocolatey treat. Cadbury Hot Chocolate 3 in 1. Just add hot water. Available in stores at 18 Naira. The power of cool. Everybody love me when I do what I do. Cause when I come through I got the power of cool. I'm going to be sitting now today or four days when my girls won't come visit me. I need to go and expire. Oh, but my guys, they can't follow me. Watch this, man. I'm also for the hand. Hey! Every long time. Hey! Babe, what's happening now? Sorry to disappoint you, but my subscription don't expire. The match is not on my GoTV package. Now you're all about that. I beg, give me your phone. I think I show you how you go take Dua for my GoTV app for your phone. Life is so much easier with my GoTV app. Make payments, clear error messages, change wow. your package. You can also check your due dates and keep abreast wow. of your payment history. Ah. Oh. The new My Go TV app is everything you need in one place. So what are you waiting for? Download My Go TV app now from Google Play or App Store to enjoy the easy life. Go TV, live it, love it. here with uh, Mr. Patrick uh, Oljeka, uh, Director Artisanal Mine, Artisanal and Small Scale Mining, Department of Ministry of uh, uh, Mines and Steel Development. Yes. Now, let me ask you this. Apart from formalizing uh, the artisanal miners, uh, the issue of marketing and collecting of royalties are central in revenue generation. Yep. So what are some of the measures uh, to tighten uh, leakages? Uh, well, um, yeah, the sector currently from 2005 have been undergoing a reform and that reform is to take off all the 
non leakages and other gaps that exist in the operations of the subsector. Um, recently, the current administration established a committee that looked at the optimization of revenue from the sector. You will agree with me that uh, revenue uh, contribution of the mining sector to the national GDP has been increasing gradually from a mere 360 million in 2005 to 5 billion after the last count in 2019. And the committee came out with a series of recommendations which the administration is looking into to start to stem, further stem leakages that were very, very obvious. We're working on that and uh, we hope that with a set target of about 20 billion contribution in the year 2020, um, most of those uh, 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 the loopholes would have been taken care of. Okay, is there any timeline for this uh, formalization process? Formalization is a continuous process because like with the increase in poverty, more persons are entering into the mining sector. And of course, the program, is, which is supposed to be a continuous roll-on, roll-off program, gradually because of... Uh, challenges of funding uh, now have some uh, lacuna time gap between one operation to the other. To the extent that when you successfully complete the process, by the time you get to the field, you will see that more persons are available. So it is a continual process. Well, hopefully, hopefully, with uh, the sustainability of the program, within a couple of years, we should be able to get through. And once that is done sufficiently, those who have refused to form into cooperative to be formalized will not be criminalized. But government, at this moment, is not criminalizing in the operation. Okay. Now, are there plans to revive some moribund mining sites in Nigeria? For yeah. example, the Nguku uh, it, mine. Well, not as government operating directly because of government policy of administrator regulator. But the program that we call a proof of concept is another channel government is looking at partnering with uh, strong operations that will continue to improve in our business and then put in some uh, equity and grow that operation uh, optimally. Well, we've heard about this issue of a gestation period when it comes to mining, and that yep. has been on and on for, for decades now. When can the gestation period end for us to have uh, all these mines uh, reactivated? Incidentally, mining is like uh, you uh, planning into uh, renovating a gigantic building. You know that you have to spend more money to get the building to a, a proper standard. So, like mining, it is not an investment that you get the result within a short span of time. Taking into cognizance that you will need to do exploration, detailed exploration to determine the quantum of mineralization. And thereafter, you now assess and obtain what we call mining lease. Mining lease that will last you for 25 years. Mm. Right? So, uh, the Nigeria Minerals and Mining had made a provision that you can take the first three years of the exploration license and as you progress with the exploration, if you have not concluded sufficiently, you can reapply again for an extension. So we are looking at gestation period of investment in mining, majorly between five to ten years. All right, I asked that question because we've been hearing about that since 1999, yep. and uh, you know we've not been able to learn. But uh, all the same, uh, progress has been made yes. so far. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Patrick uh, Ojeka, Director, Artisanal and Small Scale Mining Department, Minister of Mines and Steel Development. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you, Kirian. All You're right, welcome. you're still watching Weekend File. We'll take another break. We'll Thank be back you. very shortly. <laughs> channel where you be watch just now don't work huh? no panic can you see me no panic you go do it by yourself like abc oh yeah press the menu button on top your remote scroll up and down till you see information central then press ok mm, press ok check the signal strength and quality if the signal strength and quality pass 70 make you press the exit button go back go advanced options then choose installation then go to reset and press ok yeah, press ok yeah. Wow, now you say fit catch all those channels with the one miss road by yourself. <laughs> yes, 
make your groove for no loss. You see as I do am, Abi? Huh? And I see as I do am. Go TV. Live it. Love it. <laughs> and I see as we do am. President Muhammad Buhari sends warm felicitation to former Senate leader Victor Ndomayewa on his 64th birthday, saluting his courage, foresight and delight or uh, diligent service to the nation. A statement by the Senior Special Assistant to the President on Media and Publicity, Garba Shehu, the President joins Senator Ndoma Eba's family and friends in celebrating the lawyer, lawmaker, and astute administrator who left his footprints of loyalty and dedication wherever he served the nation, especially on the political and economic sectors. President Buhari prays that uh, the Almighty God will grant former Senate leader longer life and good health to keep serving the nation. And now goes Pauls. Nigeria's under-17 female national team this evening in the first leg of the World Cup qualifier match played in Conakry humiliated Guinea by six goals to one. Second leg comes up in Lagos. For more on sports update, let's join Olumide Egontola. Toje Marin won the first gold of the competition.